the season finale. Take one and rolling. It's the end of the season as we know it. It's the, it's the end of the season as we know it. I and know I don't feel so good, but it's great. The end of season nine, I'm happy about that. Hello and welcome to the season nine finale of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss and debate literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's game. Let's meet the panel. All right. Hi, I'm Jesse. I'm Tori. And I'm Josh. And to wrap up this season, we're going to do it the same way we wrapped up season seven. And also the same way we wrapped up season one. And that is talking about Emily Dickinson's poetry. Oh, of course. Yes, yes exactly. Yeah. What we, right? Yeah. And <laughs> the poem that we're going to be going over is we, we grow accustomed to the dark. Wait a minute. It's okay, I'm accustomed to it. Oh. Actually, that makes a good deal of sense in the lighting. Because mm -hmm. it looks better. not washed out now. As right. long as we don't, as long as you can see what we're saying. <laughs> see what How see can you what see what he's saying? <laughs> you can see what we're but saying. It would be Insert censor clip here. Please. And Look, get started guys, to the next come on titles. You can see what we're saying right, right here. here. Tori, insert something right here. See what we say. It's like when John Lennon was walking around in the yellow submarine <laughs> saying, is. all you need is love, and the words just come out of his mouth. Oh, if you can do that with Josh, that would be fantastic. Oh, we're going to do that. All right. right. Figure it out, son. <laughs> all right. What do we got, Josh? Already the discussion oh, starter for this discussion is... <laughs> Why did I invite you all here today? <laughs> Hey, it's my house. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, Josh, what is the discussion starter for We Grow Accustomed to the Dark? It's so fancy. I know. What I want it. It's so This is a gyre. That's true. And that's pretty my book. Where is the closest <laughs> mental facility to institute for my <laughs> Great discussion starter. <laughs> Right. Take three, rolling. The discussion starter for this poem is, We Grow Accustomed to the Dark was written in 1862 during a period of time where Dickinson wrote a lot about life and death. Do you feel that Dickinson had an intimate connection with this poem, or do you feel it was simply a subject that held her intrigue or her interest? Hmm. Just uh, the latter. Hmm. Um, I feel... Um, mm. Like, it's the latter, but, like, I feel that uh, there were probably some deaths that did affect her and enough that she wanted to write mm -hmm. about it. Um, usually, uh, with me, maybe not with death, but certainly with depression and with stuff that happens in my life that's very frustrating and depressing, um, I will usually write about it. I don't feel like I have a connection to depression, but I feel like I want to, like, at least have an int have people be interested in what... I'm going through. Therefore, I'm interested in it enough that I want to talk about it. Was it was interesting. When I first came across this, uh, when I first came across this poem, and knowing what I did about Emily Dickinson's background, I thought it was much more uh, personal uh, yeah, I was connection. Say, I feel like this came from a personal place. Maybe it wasn't intimately personal, but there yeah. was something that was very, like, Something spurred this that was. Yeah. Learning, I think, I think, learning like one, more, I, think I don't it may think have been it one was death as too many or I think if it was later in her life, it would have been a bit more uh, intimate and haunting. Yeah, I don't but think it's like a direct correlation was, to something immediate, but yeah. there's de definitely something. This period of time, like the early 1860s area, where she starts writing about very dark, uh, grave type of things, is, I think, her best poetry. It's, it was her. It was her most passionate area too, because she was uh, uh, corresponding with uh, Higginsworth. Uh, mm -hmm. Thomas went. Uh, and who's to Thomas, say that that can't be like an Thomas interest? Wentworth Higginson? Yeah, to, 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 who's to say that that can't be an interest yeah. or a passion? Because like you see stuff happening around. You know, if I see. You know, people... Well, life and death, yeah. especially death, is right. such an interesting, fascinating topic yeah. for many different people. And I think and I'm, uh, I was to gonna... approach it from many different ways, um, the, many people, like you, you're, you yourself included as a, a writer, um, we're all fascinated with it, mainly because we don't necessarily know what happens mm. beyond that veil. Um, mm. We have surmised as much. We have given it different um, meanings uh, through religion through science, through fiction, right. um, whatever the case being, um, but I, 
the to Tori, I was actually going yeah. to say is I take it very seriously, nonfiction wise, because both of my parents um, are rabbis and they do a lot of funeral, funeral, funeral work. So they'll go to funerals, they'll perform funerals. I've also had the death of a lot of people close to me, including my grandfather, and um, just in general, my family has my fa my parents do the job that a lot of other people wouldn't want to do because it's sad and it's 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 but it's what well, needs Keith, someone needs is, to do the job. You this know? is what I think is interesting is that a lot of people attribute a sadness to it, and I can tell tell you from a family that's Irish, there's not that much sadness to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, death is a part of life. It's mm. cyclical. You know, it's just right. another step in living. This you know, circle, dying right? is just yeah, another mm. step in living and as much as the final step mm -hmm. so like that fascination with death I can tell you like my family is extremely positive and lovely to be around and very jovial but mm -hmm. death is also something that I can tell you like if you look at my sisters and me like we do have some sense of gallows humor and a dark fascination with certain things and um kind of so like black, Emily, black comedy in a way black or? comedy anything like that kind of stuff where death is kind of played with mm -hmm. um you know hand in hand mm -hmm. in a, a lighter matter mm -hmm. we um, do we do tend to do that in judaism too because we we, we have one day be the funeral and then we have a seven day period called shiva where we don't talk about the person dying we talk about how we remember them and how everyone else kind of sounds to. like an irish funeral I mean, yeah. where you the irish think wake about the where yeah. Yeah. it's uh they just per they're just preparing for the situation mm -hmm. so but uh, unfortunately this is not something that is directly kind of approached in this poem but there is a positive to the negative where she talks about light and finding that light and being able to um understand darkness and take it as it is and move forward with that and yes there is an uncertainty um i even put like right at one point in time she mentions light and lamp and stuff like that and that's the first stanza and you don't see that light anymore and she talks about uncertainty we uncertain step into um, this path and uh, the newness of the night and um, something that I thought was really interesting it, depending on where you put that emphasis of the uncertain it's we uncertain or we uncertain step so it's either the uncertain are the label of the people or uncertain is the action no matter what you're looking at though um, it, there's that uncertainty of what happens after death and mm -hmm. it's kind of that approach in this world. I always mm -hmm. like to bring up this question when we, we talk about, you know, direct opposites. Like, we're talking about light and dark here, mm -hmm. and we grow accustomed to dark. I always like to ask this question, and or not, not a question, but to bring up this point. You can't have one without the other. This is true. So you, you can't really have life without death. You can't mm -hmm. have light without dark. And, and saying we grow mm -hmm. accustomed to the dark is almost saying that we don't we really we we also have to get accustomed to the light mm -hmm. sometimes or you know it's not much different it's kind of like the same I like everything you, you kind of have to like adjust to one before you can adjust to the other and vice versa it's, just, it's also interesting how she puts it because mm -hmm. at first i actually she doesn't mention death once in this no uh, that's an uh, interesting it's, thing it's about a thing poem. that's assumed and even when it's being looked at in a, uh, even if it's looked at for its face value, the message itself even uh, can stand on its own. It could be a trek into uh, uh, solitude. Yeah, and that's which what I Emily have. Dickinson could have been writing about uh, in order to uh, her contemplation of living a, a solitary lifestyle inner turmoil, depression, loss, etc. The mm -hmm. sensation of there being no light for guidance. Yeah. And that's mentioned about halfway through the poem. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to chime in here just because mm -hmm. I've been so quiet because I feel like everybody else agrees about the theme except mm -hmm. for me. I read this and I saw this as, you know, trying to get the courage to do something um, mm -hmm. that I guess otherwise you couldn't do or you hesitated about. I did not get death from this poem at all. Hmm. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, you. Ooh, yeah, I, no, I wanted to zoom in on this one no, line. Go here. ahead. Sorry, and and, and I like, and that's why, I, like, I, I've been so quiet. I'm like, oh my gosh, did I read it wrong? Did I read the no, right poem? Well, 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 like, so <laughs> like, yeah, did Je I read the right Jesse, what I, what, like what, I hadn't, I hadn't actually it's said that I um, a, this it's last the art line. of the written word. So you're gonna, and yeah. I even see sometimes I read something once. And then I read it another time, and I see something much different. Yeah, I was gonna say I didn't see like sadness in this at all. I saw this like in that first line. Uh, he's got it where it's talking about we grow accustomed to the dark. Um, 
Like, when like, as the neighbor holds the holds lamp, lamp to witness, to witness goodbye. a goodbye, that's like you're slowly walking away from the light. You're gaining the courage instead of staying by that light. You're Ooh, getting I that like courage that, to go that forward. That it depends on whether or not you see yeah, light like, and dark as uh, whether or not you see it as uh, conformatory or uh, whether or not mm-hmm. you're seeing dark in its general. Uh, Notation as far as yeah. I don't know. I just thought that's trying to be brave. Courage, like, courage is not just about being afraid. Courage is about going out and doing what you have to, even though you're afraid. Yeah, it's just being yeah, courage. exactly. It's it's being afraid and doing it anyway. Right. And the thing mm-hmm. is, you know, when you do, and once you get that initial courage to go and do something that may scare you, you know, you grow accustomed to doing it. Like, mm. that first time is horrifying, but that second time is easier. Did you read that? I can easier. see where you're coming from with that last answer. Either the darkness alters or something in the sight adjusts itself to midnight, and life steps almost straight. That's, so what, I, that's, that's, that's where I, I got yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm that's like, really... So I'm like, maybe I read the wrong thing, no. but the, I, I didn't see this as a sad poem about I don't necessarily death or see depression it as a or anything. poem that's like super sad but it's it's something that is contemplating like we will be in those moments where we're uncertain where the familiarity of having a neighbor who's holding a light that lights your way you will be yeah. kind of adrift in that sensation of having no so no guidance. actually like when i when i read it and i was telling josh on my way up here um i'm going on a vacation and one of my things to do i'm planning on going caving or splunking or whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it yeah, yeah and <laughs> i like the whole point is to you know face some uh not maybe not necessarily fears because i'm not claustrophobic i'm not afraid of the dark but they make me uncomfortable so it's like i want to face those things i want to have the courage to do that and so when i read this poem that's actually what i thought about it's like oh my gosh i'm gonna be brave and i'm gonna go do this i'm gonna have the courage to do it and you know it, it, it was a little fitting that you know caves are dark and you're not gonna have any light and you know it kind of worked out that way but like so that came from a very personal yeah experience. and that's why i think i saw that maybe a little bit differently but i mean i didn't i didn't get depression or death out of this at all so i got i'd like to take both what jesse's saying and what tori and josh are saying and combine it i think what this is trying to say is that maybe someone died and this is not about death itself it's about the steps you take after death of trying to recover from the emotions and the feelings and the grief and the sorrow and the melancholy it, that they have the felt before it could be the coming to terms too. yeah and the yeah. last yeah. the coming last to terms stanza with the, the inevitable yeah the, the, stanza the last stanza right i think is actually supposed to be like a positive it's resolution yeah it's mm. that Res- yeah that's form. exactly it's resolution it, I, I think like at how, the end of the day if you look at this mm. poem and you are an excellent shining example of that. No matter who you are and where you come from, poetry is art, and art is supposed mm. to instill in us something that is... Art is subjective. Exactly. You know, it's it's subjective, and we all have some sense of a personal background that it, it draws from. And if it spurs some sort of emotional stirring in you, then that means that it's done the job, and it's done the job right. And right, right. It doesn't right. even have to matter what the stirring is. It exactly. Could be it could be or, angry, here's it another... Could be, yeah. I had something I wanted to present. Yeah, sure. Uh, what... Uh, did anybody have any thoughts about this being about uh, terminal illness? It could, I can see that too. I got it. it could be. Because no, it, it, it would be. None of the sad stuff. I, I mean, it's the, the prefer, it's <laughs> Jesse's in your like, The idea that it's preparing sad. for the inevitable. I think if you terminal wanted to illness, use the most, I think the most general word that I can hmm. think of that will describe this poem is realistic. Hmm. I think it's just explaining. Anything. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have to be one particular yeah, thing, but whatever it is, it's the death, realistic process. Death is inevitable, but terminal illness makes the inevitable all be sooner. I mean, I think, like I said um, before, I think it all depends on, um, you know, how you, or how you said what you kind of take from it. And whether you see, like, terminal illness, death, um, you know, the courage to move forward or the courage to move on. Um, I really think that this poem has, like, definitely something to take from it and it, it kind of reminds me of the last poem that we literally just talked about with um robert frost you know nice. the mm-hmm. uh uh the desire to keep going or you know and the way you want to keep yes, going and the, way the person to chooses to exactly yeah. so um I, I think it, it's kind of neat how you know those two poems can kind of like uh complement each other you so know well. in a way all the all the um works we have discussed today even to an extent very hungry caterpillar have to do with about moving forward mm-hmm. in a way and, and trying yeah. to predict what's going forward change. and oh, change. Very progressive. And, yeah. Oh my god, we're, we're spanning weeks now. We're spanning weeks. 
Yeah. We have like a, a, a month-wide theme here. Yeah. Actually, it's, it's going to be a summer of... season, so uh, two weeks. Uh, so right. two weeks of moving forward. That's mm-hmm. going to get too ahead of ourselves. <laughs> Some more moving forward jokes, I see. Alrighty then. It's a good poem. Do we have any final thoughts? I want to say, um, this is kind of an early jump. How much of a pleasure it has been to be on this particular episode. Because this has been an episode with poetry that I've been looking for for years where everyone has something to bring to the table and it's not kind of everyone thinking the same I thing and, and yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's 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 wonderful just mm. how this particular group of four here we have the we view this poem and we all think it's something slightly different but also slightly similar and I just want to say it this is probably the, the best poem I love Dickinson's so that already puts it up as being mm-hmm. with you guys and discussing Not this girl. already <laughs> throwing me in this favorite been. poem conversation I'm so glad you were able to revisit yeah. her because there's so many poems to choose from mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. granted her poems all go by the first line but no, you, it's still you gotta stick you stick with is, it so. it's it <laughs> very much uh, she's more about the content than she is about the uh, cover and I have to agree with Ari on that because, like I said, I mean, I was kind of like hiding over here, keeping quiet because I was never like, never hide, I, <laughs> never hide. If you have something different to say, like that's Please. that's the reason that, why like, we're here. Especially the first poetry, four minutes especially. you guys were talking, I read this over yeah. and over. I'm like, I'm still not getting what you guys got out of as, this. As, to, as Tori and I said earlier, the poetry is very subjective, mm-hmm. and you know, uh, and the more opinions you have on it the better and <laughs> none of them are wrong everybody oh, no, brings their wrong, own yeah. you know rightness to the table and that's why I, I love reading sometimes the comments that we have in the videos mm-hmm. and especially when people like interact with the videos and mm-hmm. say yeah, whatever I, they think that's, like, that's there's no I in I think that's always no, uh, the, the interaction is probably what makes the booktube community uh, all the, the that's that's the cream of the crop with the booktube community is the ability to interact with uh, other readers on a global entity because maybe we not necessarily didn't see it as the same way that you saw it. And, so. and of course, like, you know, YouTube, BookTube, you guys out there are like, mm. if you see anything in this mm. poem that we didn't, please mm. put it in the comments. Yeah, that was interesting, the way that we were interacting with the people for uh, Next to a Four Scott America. Mm-hmm. That yeah, was really That's um, E.E. E. Cummings, right? Yeah, E.E. E. Cummings. It's a good poem. Not a good I've read it before. Already then, if you're interested in checking out the complete poems of Emily Dickinson, edited by Thomas H. Johnson... This is the collection, this is a, a, an updated uh, version of the collection, or this was the entire collection, but it was, uh, this is, this wasn't printed. I had grown accustomed. <laughs> uh, Grow accustomed to the this lights. This is to a, see the a newer edition, but uh, this is the complete poems of Emily Dickinson, edited by Thomas H. Johnson. Ooh. This is what solidified Emily Dickinson's... Uh, legacy in uh, American literature and world literature. So, thank you for tuning in to our ninth season of Literary Gladiators. We will be back for a tenth season <laughs> of Literary Gladiators in a few weeks. So, be sure to join us then, Trevor, and we will have down. plenty of uh, content coming up in between. <laughs> and for now, and as always, we encourage you to keep, keep reading. reading. Thank you for your time, dear viewers. Totally unrehearsed. That was so perfect.